It's really exciting to be here, and uh, we have three incredible panels, and then a performance, and then a reception with wine, and we have water too, but you could have some wine, uh, and a chance to really talk about all of these sessions, which are so exciting. And uh, for us here at the Asia Society, I feel that uh, we are in complete concord with the the vision and excitement of what JLF is as a global literary festival of ideas and thinkers, and it's such a pleasure to be able to share it in person. Remember that when COVID was all around and we all had to stay home? Well, we're coming out, and that's really exciting. Um, I just wanted to uh, ask all of you, uh, if you have cell phones, Please go ahead and use them for your social media. Reach out, put your ideas out there in the world, uh, but turn the ringer off. That would be great. And it's my pleasure and honor to bring Sanjoy Roy up, uh, who is the mastermind, or one of the masterminds behind this festival and uh, making this such a global, exciting moment. Sanjoy. Uh, good evening. Uh, we didn't start out thinking that we we're going to become the biggest uh, literature festival in the world. It was an accident in the making. And even though Harvard uh, Business School in its case study sort of said that we had a five-year and a 10-year and a 15-year plan to take over the world, let me tell you, it wasn't anything like that. Uh, it was in part an accident waiting to happen. Uh, two people, John and Faith Singh, uh, some of you may know, they used to run an apparel company called Anoki, which does beautiful block, block print textiles in Jaipur. John had been involved in built heritage, or restoring the built heritage in the old city of Amer, and of course in the pink city. And they'd come out to uh, the Edinburgh festivals in, in the early 2000s, I think, 2001, where we used to do a lot of work uh, looking at how do you bring the arts, marry it to built heritage and create a value for it so that people don't tear down old buildings or repurpose them. And in Jaipur at that point of time, many people were tearing down their old havelis and hotels and palaces and so on and so forth and making what we do make these days, malls and, and, and new buildings and office blocks and we work places and so on and so forth. So, uh, they, they asked us to come in and help them set up a festival, which we did. It was called the Jaipur Virasat Heritage Festival. Uh, we didn't run it at that point of time because we felt that Jaipur, like India, lived in many different realities at the same time, lived in many different centuries at the same time, and we weren't really party to that or understood uh, how Jaipur uh, works, so we produced some programs within that larger festival. Uh, but some years down the line, the festival itself uh, found itself in some sort of financial problems, and they reached out again and said, you know, it's your baby, you started it, you have to come and rescue it. And so within that existing festival, uh, Namita Gokhale and William Dalrymple had been programming a literature or a literary segment, so what we did is we took that out of the main festival and created what, what is now come to be known as, as the Jaipur Literature Festival, which is not necessarily only about literature. Literature is at the core of it, but it's about music, it's about craft, it's about everything to do with uh, culture and tradition and heritage and innovation and looking into the future. And it's about ideas from across the world. It's about writings from across the world. And our primary motivation in all of this is to see that, you know, in today's world of WhatsApp, 
where we tend to get a lot of disinformation rather than information, whether the considered work of writers who've spent time researching and writing could perhaps break through the ignorance uh, that surrounds so many of us. And, you know, ignorance in many ways leads to uh, hatred because people don't understand the other, another religion, another color, another people, another caste, whatever. And that hatred inevitably leads to violence, which seems to be gripping all of us. Not just the violence that you see in the wars of Ukraine and Russia or Libya, etc., but it's the violence that you see online today. It's the violence of the image, the violence of the, of the word. Uh, it's, it's the stalking. It's all of the terror that you see online. And that's one of our efforts that we that we do at the Jaipur Literature Festival and the many JLFs that we have uh, across the world. Uh, we're absolutely delighted, uh, you know, seven years ago, we set up JLF in New York with our then partners at MoMA. And then five years ago, Rachel and I, we go back many, many years. We've done so many different things at Asia Society and fought with Homeland Security, in fact, trying to get some of the artists onto this particular stage. And this was obviously our natural home uh, in New York. So five years ago, we set up shop here. And what COVID did was really change the way that we programmed. We were up and running, uh, I think, 4th of April, 23rd of March, India went into lockdown. Uh, 4th of April, we went online, not really knowing if anybody was going to watch what we were putting out. But we were very clear that with all our many partners, universities and hospitals and researchers, we wanted people to know where COVID was going. What was the new research coming out? It was on that platform that Dr. Sharad Paul in New Zealand stepped up and said that he thought that this virus had come not directly from the bat to a human being, but perhaps from a bat to a civet cat to a pangolin in the wet markets to a human being. It was where Dr. Sid Mukherjee right here in New York came out of his operation theater and said, people are not dying of COVID per se, but they're dying because of the clots that this virus is causing in human beings. And that's how they're dying. And very quickly we realized, you know, in the first five or six weeks, then millions of people started watching. In that first season, we had four and a half million people watch from across the world. And it was at our first main festival online in 2021, we had about 25 million people who watched the Jaipur Literature Festival. And it opened up a whole different being for us. I mean, for us, we've always reached out to Commonwealth countries or English-speaking countries. Internationally, the US is our largest on-ground visitors as well as online. But here what we found, number three and four was China and Germany. Uh, number five was Indonesia. Number six was Uzbekistan. No idea why. I haven't an analyzed that one yet. Um, and today, um, because we are online as a necessity now, we've got this huge community. Uh, I, just before coming, I was looking at the new statistics of people watching us. And we realized in the first 20 cities, uh, the biggest population watching us, we had two cities from Saudi Arabia on our list. So, you know, we, we've sort of evolved in different ways and some of the programming has evolved too. We're absolutely delighted to welcome all our wonderful speakers. Uh, yesterday we had some great sessions at the National Arts Club with uh, the wonderful um, Madhur Jafri. She, she celebrated 90 years the 50th anniversary of the publication of her first book. And boy, oh boy, she was all there, her memory intact, and it was really a celebration. And of course, we had Martin Puckner talking about a book that you all must buy, which is the history of literature and how literature has shaped the world. And of course, we had great poets. We went across to the Center for Fiction in BAM, and we had a couple of great sessions there, and today, it's here at Asia Society. So welcome to everybody. A big thank you to Rachel and to all her colleagues at Asia Society. Really, all of us at Teamwork just find it wonderful to be here to partner with them. And thank you all for stepping out 
here today, we know that it's a working day and it's always difficult to get out of work. There's always something more important to do. But like we say, coming to a place where there is uh, a conversation and a debate means you get to learn things that perhaps you wouldn't otherwise uh, know about. So thank you all for coming and welcome to all our writers. Thank you. Namita Gokhale, our festival co-director, couldn't join us here in New York, but what we did is recorded a message from her. Namita is an author, a publisher, and of course also co-festival director. Namita Gokhale. Dear friends and lovers of books, we are delighted to return to New York to present the seventh edition of JLF. This year, we'll be bringing the festival to three different venues, the Asia Society, the National Arts Club and the Center for Fiction to truly celebrate the cosmopolitanism and liveliness of New York City. Although I shall miss being there in person, I shall be with you virtually through it all. How we tell our stories and how we share them is changing as are the voices and technologies that platform them. Yet the stories remain eternal and timeless. Our narratives define us. Over two days of ideation and literary conversation, we look at the different perspectives of these shared stories. We see how they travel and transform and forever renew themselves. The human race has evolved through its ability to tell stories, to share each other's narratives. From creation myths to tales of art in the time of war, from the paradoxes of India to the history of the written word, from the living continuum of the memory of Tibetan culture and spiritual practices to a deep dive into Indian cuisine, we take you on a journey through time and space, cultures and continents. We are together, all of us who love books and ideas, and we are never alone. Wishing you joy and creativity over this very special edition. Namaste.